Shalom, today is July 11th and we're on day 279 of the war in Israel. Yediot Achronot and Ha'aras, they both have uh, different uh, titles, headlines. Yediot Achronot speaks about the attempts, uh, supposedly, that the Prime Minister's office had to change, to change protocols that were done during the war. Um, also, the soldier, soldier that died yesterday in battle and a big accident that happened um, the death of a husband and a wife um, that were killed by a missile from Hezbollah while they were driving in their car. Haaretz. Haaretz headline states or reads that the IDF has called the, the residents of the Gaza City and the Gaza Strip to evacuate south to the southern part of the Gaza Strip. And in this photograph, we see IDF soldiers in the funeral of their friend Tal, who died there, and they're from the Maglan unit. Maglan is an elite unit in the IDF, and Tal was killed in the central part of the Gaza Strip. We'll open up, and we read. Sahal, the IDF has called the residents of the Ir Aza, Ir a city, Aza is a Gaza, to evacuate uh, southward. Now, Gaza is a strip, but Gaza has a city called Gaza. It's one of the largest cities there. In the photograph, we see ruins, really, of the Khan Yunus city in the south of the Gaza Strip. Now, when the IDF um, announces or requests from the residents to leave uh, in any part of Gaza, but this time it's the Gaza city, they do it by throwing down flyers from aircrafts. In Arabic, the flyers say, please evacuate through this and this route that are supervised and are safe. They're asking them to leave because the, uh, the IDF is going to expand their operations in Gaza. Now, this is the first time since October 7th that the IDF has been, is asking all of Gaza City to evacuate. The article also reads that in, in the past week, the Gaza City has been very heavily bombed. Um, it reminds us of the, it reminds them of the first stages of the war right after October 7th. So it was, you know, slowly it lessens, but now it's heavily bombed again um, for, against uh, Hamas infrastructure, Hamas terrorists that are there again. Even from here near Jerusalem, we've been hearing uh, faint sounds of bombs uh, that we assumed were from Gaza. Now we see that it's true. Um, yeah, it reminds us of what we've heard um, in the beginning of the war that were many, many faint sounds of bombs from here. So as you get closer to Gaza, you hear it uh, louder and louder. Uh, the IDF also is checking and investigating reports um, about hurting civilians near Khan Yunis. So that relates to this photograph in Khan Yunis. So apparently, according to Palestinian reports, uh, some civilians, some innocent civilians were hurt and the IDF is investigating that case. Next headline, the ones who were killed, a couple that was killed yesterday from a direct rocket hit uh, in the Golan Heights. The rocket comes from Lebanon, Hezbollah. Uh, they are parents to three teenagers. And a, a source from the army says that there was no interception because the area that was hit was considered uh, open area. And open areas in Israel do not deserve or not calculated in the interceptions of the Iron Dome. Therefore, uh, they were hit. Now, the last months, the north has been bombed uh, severely. Uh, dozens and dozens of rockets and sirens throughout, um, uh, throughout days and nights. Many of them are intercepted. Others of them, uh, others are just, um, they hit open areas and no one gets injured. But this is the, one of the, one of the um, single times that innocent Israeli people, citizens, are killed from these rockets. So let's read more about uh, this couple and their family. And the Otachonot, I'm opening up in the center here. Uh, here they are. Their names are Noah and Nir Bernes from Kibbutz Ortal, from Ortal Kibbutz in the Golan Heights. This is Matan, he's 18 years old. Shira, she's 16 years old. And Ido, 13 years old, um, uh, that are alive. They were, not in the, they were not in the vehicle when their parents got hit. And Matan says... Uh, you're my oxygen, you're my uh, breath of fresh air, you're pure people that always helped everyone, and every minute with you was laughter and joy. 
I know that you are proud of me and I, and I miss our private jokes. I will always remember that the Bernis family is a brand name. Matan the son says, Toda lachem. Thank you, Ima and Abba, for the best life I've had. So he is, he's, he's speaking here about the responsibility that he feels to take care of his younger siblings. And he says, my parents gave me this, my wonderful parents gave me this privilege and this honor, and I will always have people that will help me. Some people say that we're left orphans, but that's not true. We are surrounded with family and friends that love us and that will take care of us. So he really fe feels a sense of security in the midst of this tragedy, to say the least. Um, here on the bottom, we hear, we read about eyewitnesses that these are Druze Arabs living in the area, driving 50 to 100 meters right behind them. Um, and they're speaking about how frightening this explosion was. You know, they, they had to escape from the steward, say we escaped from it by a miracle being uh, just a few meters away. The headline up here next to Israel be milchama, which you know Israel's at war, uh, says that uh, the, red line, the red line has been crossed. Hakav ha'adom nechza, a shaking in the Golan Heights after a rocket has hit Noah near Bernes from the kibbutz. Because, because um, rockets throughout you know, the, the whole nine months, and especially in the last month, dozens and dozens of sirens and uh, rockets have been launched to to Israel, sirens through the day, sirens through the nights, um, barrages, fires in open areas, uh, places hit, is, it's unsafe completely, but it's very rare for a couple, for civilian citizens, uh, citizens who are innocent to be killed by rockets. So they're saying here that that is a red line and this is an opportunity to, to go into war against Hezbollah, uh, a strong one, a short one, to, to eliminate this threat that is exhausting Israel in the north. Turning the page is about the heroes that will not return, and here again, Talaha, 21 years old from Fal Saba, is mentioned how he was killed in the central part of Gaza uh, in an operation, um, serving in the elite unit Maglan. So this is Talaha, may his memory be blessed. In the center of the page, we see a large article in the headline about a very complicated incident that happened on October 7th in Kibbutz Beri, one of the hard hit places um, during that Shabbat. And this is an incident where um, a commander commanded to shoot a tank shell towards a home of an Israeli civilian because two terrorists were there holding 14 hostages, 14 uh, Israeli hostages. And that commander decided in order to, after uh, a while and after a wait, where they, it was a very complicated incident where they were asking the, the terrorists to come out and to leave the hostages alone. Um, the terrorists were not cooperating. That this commander commanded to shoot this shell, this tank shell that killed the terrorists and killed 12 of the hostages, 12 out of the 14. <laughs> hostages. The residents, the eyewitnesses, the family members of these hostages say we do, not, we do not need an investigation to learn about the failure that happened. Um, they're staying near the Dead Sea still as being evacuated from their kibbutz. Um, they're saying, Lo tzarich tachkir. we do not need an investigation. Whoever saw the abandonment in front of their eyes. They are very much against what the commander did while other, other people um, and sources in the IDF are siding with the commander and saying he's a very, very moral uh, person and commander, and he probably did what was the best thing for the moment. He's asking, why do the officers and soldiers take care of uh, the hurt and bodies of soldiers, dead bodies, uh, before they rescued civilians? Uh, children were amongst these civilians from homes that were surrounded by terrorists. He says, I think the most important thing in the investigation are the moral questions. Now, this is a very rare incident, obviously, and this investigation, the results of this are going to be presented to the residents of Be'eri, which, again, according to the article, many of them are just not interested to show up and hear about the results. They're looking forward and not to the past. This is the home 
that was bombed. Here are more, more photographs of the home uh, that was bombed from inside. And this home was also known, it got to be well known because of the Chanukiya that was found in its ruins a few days after October 7th. Before we end, I want to show you last two headlines. One of them is about a family with four sons. Three of them are serving in uh, an elite infantry unit. And the other one is also a fighter. They are all reservists. Uh, the mom is nervous. The father was higher up in the military too, so he's, he's okay about it. He says, we're okay. But they all work in a family business, a meat business. And that business has gotten a hard hit as uh, all of the sons have been volunteering in reserve for the last nine months defending Israel. We're saying we're strong people. We're not poor, like we're not miserable, and we'll be okay. They're speaking about the business. And lastly, an article here about women that are called larger than life, Gdolot Mehachaim. And this is a project about 21 women that are survivors, that are heroes, it says, that their life has gone through a big shaking on October 7th and they are uh, speaking in front of the camera, and here there are just a few stories are, are uh, showing these, uh, some of the women. Uh, this project is meant, the purpose of the project is to document the grief and the loss of these women to the side of the uh, might, the heroic um, behavior, and the rehabilitation. So one of them is Gali Segal, she and her boyfriend lost their right leg on October 7th during the party on the Nova party near the Gaza Strip. Um, and they are getting married. They're getting married this month. There she is um, with what looks like a wedding dress and a right leg that is, um, that's a replacement. Here is Shelly. She's a mom of Omer that is still in captivity, Omer Shemtov. Uh, this is a paramedic woman that volunteered on October 7th. She's holding, she's holding psalms in her hands. She's obviously religious. Um, and, and another one is Michal Lubnov here. She's the wife of Alex Lubnov that's still in captivity in Gaza. She has a small girl, and she gave birth uh, half a year after October 7th, after her husband was taken into captivity, and we see the baby in her arms. For more updates and stories, go to allisrael.com and follow us on our social media. Please share this video with your friends. It is summer break now, so I'll be taking a few weeks off. I won't be seeing you, you won't be seeing me, but All Israel News will continue to deliver uh, the newspaper headlines to you, newspapers that Israelis are reading today in Israel. Uh, so keep following All Israel News. God bless you for standing with Israel. This is Rotem again for All Israel News.